on the test for chapter 6, one of the things you might be asked is to look at one loop, figure out what it does, and then from four choices pick another loop that does the exact same thing. And what we've talked about before in the last lecture was how for loops and while loops are very easily interchanged. They are about 99% compatible, meaning that 99% of the time any for loop can be rewritten as an if, uh, as a while loop, and vice versa. Any while loop can be rewritten as a for loop. Do while, sometimes you can take a for loop and rewrite it as a do while. Um, and sometimes you can't. The two that are closest are for and while. But in theory, under certain conditions, all three loops can do the same exact thing. And you may be asked to pick out loops that do the same thing, have the same output on the test. So one of the examples I showed earlier was a for loop that is basically going to loop from the number 0 to the number 4, so it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is 5 times that it loops. And it sums the numbers up, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, to get a sum. And I showed you how to do that with a for loop. I also demonstrated how to do it with a while loop, because they're so similar it's pretty easy to rewrite that for loop as a while. And in this case, I can actually rewrite the same loop again as a do while. And I showed you in the last recording that while a for loop will help you manage the loop counter so that the loop stops and doesn't go infinite without you having to put extra lines to manage it in the body of the loop, while and do while are not like that you as the programmer have to manage the loop variable, the counter, <clears throat> so that at some point in time the condition that is driving the loop becomes false and the loop stops. And In my last example I had forgotten to put this line in, I accidentally left it out, which made this loop infinite because the counter started at zero, the loop continued as long as the value in counter was less than five, well, it stayed zero, it never changed, so if you watched the last recording you saw it infinitely loop. Similar situation here, I've created a third variable called new counter to be my loop counter for the do while. I'm starting it at zero, and each time I decided to reset the sum so we can watch it add the numbers again and get the same answer each time. I'm printing out the value in the counter, I'm adding it to the sum, I'm printing out my subtotal as I go, and then again, just like with the while loop, I have to make sure that I am manipulating the counter variable so that eventually this condition here, the value in new counter, will be 5 or greater so the loop stops. If I leave this line out, the loop would be infinite and would run forever. You may be asked on the test to identify infinite loops. So you're generally going to see while or do while loops that are missing the manipulation of whatever variable is part of the condition. So here the condition is counter is less than 5. This thing will loop as, as long as the counter is less than 5. Here it will loop as long as new counter is less than 5. If I forget to put in the line of code to bump them up, or if I get confused and I put minus 1, and I'm accidentally subtracting one so that new counter goes from 0 to negative 1 to negative 2, it would always be less than 5 in that case. I would still have an infinite loop. <clears throat> so you need to be able to look at loop code, figure out if it's infinite or not. You need to be able to figure out what it's doing and find loops that are written maybe with for or do while etc. that do the same thing as the loop in question. Another thing you need to remember is that you cannot reference the counter variable in a for loop outside of the body. You will get an error. However here, this counter variable is a standalone variable. It will live for 
the whole rest of the program regardless of whether it's ever used again after this while loop. So you can reference it later on in the code if you need to. Same with new counter. Another scenario on the test that you might see is a fill in the blank type scenario. You will not be writing code by hand. It will be in multiple choice, choice format. But you will be given a scenario and you will be asked to put the line of code in <clears throat> that makes sure the loop does not become infinite. In other words, you will be asked to correctly complete the loop. And for example, it might be missing the condition for a while loop. So you might be given a scenario such as you want to write a loop that's going to count down from 100 to 1. You want it to stop when it gets to the number 1. Here is the body of the loop. Here is the setup. We've got an integer named x that starts at a 100. We're going to print 100. We're going to subtract 1 from 100. x minus minus is the same as saying x equals x minus 1. So then we're going to, x is going to become 99, then 98, then 97. What line of code do you need to put here? What condition is required to keep this thing from becoming infinite and to stop it when x gets to 1? Well, hopefully you would realize that as long as this condition is true, as long as x is greater than or equal to 1, this thing will loop. As soon as it becomes less than 1, such as 0, it will stop. So that would be the correct answer. As long as x is greater than or equal to 1, 100, 99, 98, 97, all the way down to n, including the number 1, this will loop and print out the corresponding number. As soon as it gets to 1 and it prints out 1 and then it subtracts 1 from 1 and becomes 0, the loop will stop. So that would fulfill the requirements of the loop as well as stop the loop when it gets down to 1. <clears throat> you might be asked, similarly, you might be given all of that information, you might be asked what line of code needs to go here to make sure this loop counts down and eventually stops. And of course that would be, you could say either x minus minus or you could say keep subtracting 1 from x and that will allow the loop to print out every number and then stop at the right point. So while you will not write code by hand, you will be asked on a few of the questions to complete either a line in the body of the loop or to complete the loop condition to make it work according to some directions that you are given. Pay very careful attention when you are asked to evaluate a loop and predict the output, as you will be in several questions. Pay very careful attention to whether it's a greater than or a greater than equal, or a less than, or a less than equal. So pay close attention to that because there will be some questions on there that will be trying to trick you and see if you caught whether or not it's just greater or it's greater than equal to, and so on. Also remember that exclamation point equals means not equals, and that you will see that sometimes in loop conditions. The other thing you will see, there might be, say, a Boolean variable, and you might have a loop condition that says while y. That is the same thing if you look, watch the, I believe it was the prime number recording, I think I went through this. When you have a Boolean and you can, you can actually take a little shortcut, you can just say while y. That is the same thing as saying while y equal equal true. Those are the same thing. If you want to say while y is false, you can use not y, not true. That is the same as saying 
y equal equal false. So you will see those perhaps in conditions on the test. So if I have a loop, and I know this is not the best example, but if I had a loop something like this with a boolean, while y is true, I've set y equal to true, my condition is as long as y is false, this loop will never execute because y is true, it's not false. So Java will completely skip the loop because that condition is not true and it will come to the next line of code after the ending brace for the ending body of the loop and it will start executing. Now in this case if y was actually false and I had this loop I would have an infinite loop, I would have a problem because nowhere do I ever change y to true. y continues to be false, this thing would run and print out false, 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 false over and over. So somewhere in here I better have some way to set y equal to true to stop the loop. And remember, again, this is important, that not y, not true, is the same as false, okay? So keep that in mind when you are looking at the test questions. So in this case, if y is false, and I have, while well, not y, let's see what happens here. I want to comment out all of the code that I have underneath. Don't need to run that again. So let's just take a look here. And I probably don't need to run this code, so I will comment it out as well. So I've got a Boolean value, I am setting it equal to false. So that I don't have an infinite loop, it's only going to execute one time. So let's just prove to ourselves what happens here. <coughs> We'll play around with these booleans for a few minutes. So y is false. When I declare it, I set it equal to false. My loop says as long as y is false, print out y. Again, this is not the best example, but it's false. And then because I made sure I set it to true, I only looped one time. What happens if I say, while not y? And again, that's the same as saying, while not true, not true means false. Those are interchangeable terms. So even though y is false, as soon as I put not y, If y was by itself, the implication is I'm saying, well, y equals true. The second I put the not in front of it, I'm saying, well, not true, while false. Let's see what happens if I change this to true. And notice y was true. This was saying, while not true, while false, well, the value in y is true. So it didn't execute anything in here. It didn't print anything out. It skipped to right after the brace. And of course, I don't have any code there. So absolutely nothing printed out. So those are some tricky things with Booleans that you will see on the test. So as a wrap up, you need to be able to predict the output. You need to pay very close attention to the conditions, particularly if they're using less than, greater than, less than, equal, or greater than, equal. You need to be able to look at Booleans like this. You need to be able to compare loops and find ones that have the same output. And you may be asked to pick a line or two of code to make sure a loop does not become infinite. And you will be asked to pick out infinite loops as well.